All right, well, here's the deal. I was here in Gettysburg back in March, and I had the opportunity to see all kinds of great things that, that you've been seeing here on the channel. Also had the opportunity to visit what is going to become the World War II American Experience Museum. Well, it's now June. I'm back in Gettysburg. Uh, we're going to be doing a group meetup. We're going to be going back over to uh, the World War II uh, American Experience Museum to get the vehicles out and, and do some, some pretty cool things there. And uh, while we're here, we're going to be staying at this historic Gettysburg building, uh, which is now called the Federal Point Inn. Well, this is where we're going to be staying for the next few days here in Gettysburg. This is the Federal Point Inn. And just real quick, kind of a, a cool story behind this place. This was originally a school that was built in 1896. It was called the Mead School, uh, named for General Mead, and uh, was in service as an educational facility for decades, and then closed down and uh, I guess was kind of at risk into falling into disrepair until it was purchased by the Monahan family and converted into a hotel that I have heard many, many good things about. So uh, yeah, this, this could have easily been a, another sad story of a historic building, but instead we have people who love and appreciate history that uh, turned it into something quite nice. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dodge inside and uh, look around and then get set up. All right, so uh, just walked in here into the Federal Point Inn. And right off the bat, I can tell that this is a place that I'm going to like. Um, looks like got a Union uniform coat. Some binoculars, sword on display here. Uh, oh, and it says that uh, the items in this case belong to a Union officer that was under General Meade's command. Very interesting. One thing that I am really, really liking about this place is that you're constantly reminded in a very tasteful way everywhere you go of just where it is that you are. So here we see a print of Strong Vincent, one of the heroes of Little Round Top. And a uh, funny story, so here's a picture of General Lee by his headquarters, um, the individual who renovated this hotel uh, once had the hotel that was there at the Lee headquarters and sold it to the American Battlefield Trust. So I, I really appreciate how, how the people behind the Federal Point Inn are uh, also people who appreciate history. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Uh, this is the principal's bench that was originally at the Meade School. And look at the plaque that they have on it. Those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. I think that we all know some people who are still failing to learn that lesson. All right, uh, just got up here on the third floor and this hotel has just all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, for example, Things like this 45 star flag, uh, which is like the flag that would have flown whenever the school was in operation in 1896. Can't say that I've ever seen a, a 45 star flag before, um, but really, really liking this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into our room and uh, get settled in for this evening. And, whoo boy. <laughs> um, this 
is quite nice. Wow. Now, uh, Jocelyn, who works at the front desk, was telling me that in the rooms, uh, these sections right here are where the old blackboards used to be. And uh, this is super impressive. Oh, all right. Well, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and put the cameras away and, and get settled in for this evening. Uh, this bed just looks entirely too inviting after the, uh, the day that, that we've had. Uh, got myself nice and burned on Cemetery Hill uh, because I'm a moron and I only apply sunscreen after I burn my skin. But tomorrow, uh, I am so incredibly pumped because we are in Gettysburg and uh, we are going to be driving a World War II Sherman tank uh, over the same ground that the Confederates came in on uh, prior to the battle in 1863. <sighs> Gonna be an experience like no other. So back in March, I was here in Gettysburg with uh, Frank and Lonnie and Adam Buck looking at some of their, their vehicle collection for the, at this point in June, the upcoming uh, World War II American Experience Museum. And I'll tell you what, I did not even show a fraction of what they have in their collection. Look at this. This is just absolute insanity. So uh, it, it's June, whenever I was here last, it, it was March. Uh, we've got all of the World War II vehicles out. Uh, we're, we're getting some, some drone shots and some footage. We're gonna learn a little bit more about a few of these vehicles. And then we're going to hop in the old Sherman tank and get some driving lessons. I just saw this on the bumper of one of these vehicles. Uh, that, that I didn't mention last time because I didn't see it. You can see it's marked uh, Red Ball Express. Well, the Red Ball Express was this uh, real famous trucking convoy system that supplied the Allied forces after the breakout from Normandy. Uh, the, the troops were moving so fast that they were kind of outrunning their, their supply line. And uh, to expedite the cargo shipment, well, you'd have trucks with this big red dot or ball uh, on the front of it and they would follow these predetermined paths that were closed off to civilian traffic and uh, became known as the Red Ball Express. So yeah the frontline troops get a lot of the recognition but it was these guys that kept them supplied and over 75 percent of the men on the Red Ball Express were African-American. Very valuable service during the war. Now, in the last video, one of the things that I showed that they have a lot of here are Jeeps. I don't know how many Jeeps are here, but it is a lot. And there are several that, that I didn't see on that first trip. Uh, and there's one that really caught my eye. This one right here. And at first, I thought, well, that's kind of a, a goofy way to paint a Jeep, you know, to make it look like a pair of, you know, flannel pajamas. Uh, but there is actually a reason behind this color scheme. So this is called a follow me Jeep. And uh, the reason that it's painted with these uh, bright yellow and loud colors, um, you know, makes it kind of look like a, an angry yellow jacket, um, is that they wanted it to stand out so that whenever bombers were returning and maybe they had to land at a different base than what they took off from, one that they might be unfamiliar with, well, these Jeeps would get in front of them and lead them to the place where they needed to go after they landed. So yeah, learned something new today. Our biggest claim to fame is the truck collection, probably, I would think. And we have more trucks that are not even out here today. I think there's like 15 GMCs, 14 or 15 Jeeps, 
two Ward de France wreckers, a Marine Corps International M586, which is really rare, a Marmon Harrington tractor over there, GMC here with a gun ring on it, which is a hard cab with a wood body on it, which is very rare. We brought that in from England. And uh, in the museum, on display, we're probably going to have about a dozen vehicles. And along with other groupings, that will be on permanent display over there, and these will be rotated in and out. After they tour the museum, and I hope they do, and I think we're in Gettysburg, we do have the tourism here, we like, we like them to walk away with what it was like maybe back in the 40s. Uh, we want to have activities over there, reenactments outside. We want to have World War II dances inside. We want people to walk away with what it took to put these vehicles together, what the sacrifices the men gave, even on the home front here with the scrap drives. But if nothing else, people to see what, the, what this country could do when it pulled together for a common cause, like winning the war against the Nazis and the Japanese. Right, now, here's something that's actually kind of kind of cool uh, about what we're doing here today. Uh, we're about four miles from Gettysburg. Just over there on the horizon is the Mummusburg Road. So during the Battle of Gettysburg, the Confederates would have come up right through this area. Uh, and now, here we are, all these years later, uh, driving World War II vehicles. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see uh, and think about the evolution of combat and the evolution of uh, warfare uh, from the Civil War through World War II uh, all the way up to now. Right now, you may remember this vehicle from the first video. This is the Pacific, uh, nicknamed the Dragon Wagon. This was a tank recovery vehicle. You can see it's got a little bit of a defense mechanism up there on top. This took a seven-man crew, but this is what it looks like in its full glory with the trailer attached. So whenever the support crews were going out to recover these knocked out tanks, this is the behemoth that they would use. Most people don't even know that this thing even exists. And it's right here. So uh, the World War II American experience, not only a history museum, but also also a, a bird sanctuary. <laughs> they couldn't move this piece of gear because we have these baby robins nesting in here. So take a look at this thing. I just showed the Pacific. Well, this is the armored version of it. Man, that thing is a beast. Hmm. Okay, so here's another vehicle that I didn't even see last time. Uh, this is called an air compressor truck. Would have been used by the Corps of Engineers. And look at this. You'd have this giant air compressor. And it would be hooked up with all kinds of tools that would be needed. So look at this. This is a mean looking thing here. It's a two-man chainsaw. Uh, they would also have like other different saws, nail guns, I mean, incredible. Most people, I would say, don't even know that vehicles like this existed. But they do. And they have uh, a couple of them right here in this, uh, what will be uh, the American, uh, the World War II American Experience Museum. Now, here's something that I didn't include in the first video, and that is all of the uniforms. So here you can see, uh, here's one from the 82nd Airborne, and if you look at that patch there, well, that is a patch indicating that that veteran was part of the Pathfinders. But what, what I really, really appreciate, uh, here's one for the 7th Armored Division that my buddy Reed Stevens was in, um, is that... They're trying to represent all of the divisions that participated in World War II. And each one of these uniforms, with all of these patches, well, each one tells a story. Okay, so here's you know, one for the division that Desmond Doss was in. They were in Okinawa. Here's another 
82nd Airborne. Um, you get over here to the 94th Infantry Division. That's one that people don't really hear about a lot. Uh, the a bunch of 101st Airborne Division uniforms here. That's one that's a, a little bit more well known. But they're all important. They all played a role in the war and all of their stories are going to be told at the museum. All right, so those are just uh, a few of the things inside that I didn't show in the first video that I really wanted to include in this one to show uh, just a, a little bit more of this collection and, and what's going to be at the museum. But I think they are getting the Shermans fired up outside, so uh, I'm going to dodge out there and we're going to get these things out in the field. tank lined up to get out here in the field. We've got a, a, quite a few people out here today, friends of the Bucks, and everybody has a smile on their face. Like, this is this is people getting immersed in history and, and loving it. Uh, gives me a little taste of, of what this museum experience is gonna be like. What, what they're doing here is a special thing. So we've been uh, looking at uh, all of these different vehicles and uh, getting some of them out and, and running them around. Uh, but now I'm going to jump in the old Sherman here and, and get a few tank driving lessons from Adam. All right, so we got some some pretty tight quarters uh, in here, and got. I, I, am I in the driver's position or the assistant driver? You're in the assistant driver's okay. position. Okay. All right. I'm in the assistant driver's position, which is where I should be. Uh, that that makes the the most sense since since I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but look what we have here. I didn't know that uh, that I was going to be equipped with a grease gun here as well. So that's pretty sweet. All right. Well. Uh, I'm gonna hand the, the camera off to my wife and we're, we're gonna see how to operate this thing. All right, so to start this tank, uh, we have the master switches. I don't know if you can see them here, but essentially we pull those out and then let them go in like so. And I'm not gonna start the tank here for this demonstration, but you, you put both of those in. And then on this particular version, since it's the diesel, it's the M4A2 E8. We're gonna to wanna to put our clutch in, and then while we're in neutral, we'll start the tank. So we wanna make sure that our clutch is depressed, and while the clutch is in, we're gonna push the throttle ahead, the hand throttle that is, and we will hit this red button to the left. And when we do that, that'll start the first engine, and then I'll give it a little bit of gas with the, with the accelerator pedal, and I'll let the clutch out, and that'll engage the second diesel engine. And from there, we'll we'll, uh, we'll go find the Germans. Okay. So your where's your throttle again? So the, the hand throttle's right here. Okay. Push that ahead, and then you have a clutch, a clutch pedal, and a gas pedal, or an accelerator pedal, I should call it here. Yeah. Since yeah. we're in a diesel, and then you you steer with both of these. Uh, these levers here. So it's, it's kind of like a hybrid between a big truck and a bulldozer. Okay. So am I able to operate the tank from over here? You are as not. The assistant? Okay. As the assistant driver, you're, you're manning that 30 caliber machine gun. Okay. And uh, handing shells up to the, 
to the uh, loader in the rear of the tank. All right. I'm probably more qualified to operate the, the firearm than I am to drive <laughs> the tank. <laughs> well, we can find out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So again, as Adam was just talking about, I am in the assistant driver's seat. Here is the 30 caliber machine gun that the assistant driver would be operating. And he mentioned how he would also help with ammo. Well, there is the ammo storage underneath and behind the assistant driver's seat. All right, now we're actually gonna get it fired up. expect uh, so I, I mean I grew up on a farm driving tractors all the time uh, so if you can work a, a manual transmission you can uh, yeah you can work this so right now I'm going to engage the way that it works is the tracks are on like a braking system so if I pull I'm pulling the left lever back now that's engaging the brake on the left track and you can see we're turning just a little bit. So, yeah, this this is completely awesome. All right. Well, I'm, I'm getting closer to all of Frank's vehicles up here, so I'm probably gonna stop and let somebody who knows what they're doing a little bit more uh, take it on in. But this, this is an incredible experience. I'm going to go ahead and say that was probably one of the top 10 coolest things I've ever done. Uh, I'm telling you, this, this museum is going to be unlike any other. So, so whenever they, they open, uh, or maybe by the time you watch this video down the line, uh, they'll already be open. It's the World War II American Experience in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, they are doing things here that no other place is doing. And, and really telling the full story, not only with vehicles like these, but uh, with, with support vehicles and Jeeps and uh, uniforms, I mean, it, it is the, the whole package. So, so glad that, that we, able, we were able to, uh, to come out. I can't even talk. So glad that we were able to come out and, uh, and do this today.
Hey dog. I gotta make sure that I get you in the video for all of the dog lovers. You were kind of shy last time. Hey, hey, Reagan. Dog, dog, <laughs> why? <laughs> what did I do to you? This dog does not like me. 